I'm Jody Han, Mrs. Han Painted, and today's video I'll be showing you how to paint this metallic peacock feather. I'll be using some new Kiritake gem color paints that I just got, as well as my Art Philosophy watercolor confections. So have fun painting along with me to paint this really pretty and fun metallic peacock feather. Alright, this video I'm going to be showing you how to do a peacock feather, and I've done one of these before and I had a little time lapse video here on my YouTube channel, like way one of my early videos that I started out uploading before I started doing full tutorials all the time. And I wanted to go back and revisit the peacock feather because I just loved it. And I wanted to try out these new uh, Kiritake gem colors. They're metallic. I got these on Amazon for about 10 to $12. I can't remember how much I paid, uh, but roughly about 10 to $12. Probably like 10.99 or something. Anyway, so Kiritake brand, they're the gem colors and it's got uh, gem red, pink, yellow gold, gem green, gem blue, gem violet. And I'm going to do a peacock, and I did test it out that I can mix together the colors and get a pretty nice uh, coppery color when I mix together the red and the yellow gold. So I'm going to use that for the center of my peacock that has that coppery color. You can see in the inspiration picture, there's kind of a coppery color around these bright blues. And I'll use that purple and the blue to make that center and I'll do the green. So I'm going to do this all in metallics and see how it turns out. I'm going to use some Legion Stonehenge 9 by 12, 100% cotton paper. I'm just going to keep my uh, sketch off to the side here just to kind of remember how I wanted to do it. Um, I have used these once now so far because I just got them a few days ago and I did test out the yellow gold when I was painting something else, but they're in a cardboard box, which is okay if you're not a messy painter at all, but they do pop out if you wanted to put them in a metal tin or something. I may eventually do that just um, because I don't know how well that box is gonna hold up over time or how often I'm gonna use these, but I'm just gonna set these kind of to the side. I'm gonna use a little plate for mixing to make up my orange. Otherwise, I'll probably just go directly out of the pans for painting. I'm gonna use a Princeton Velvet Touch round size four. And then for all of those little thin wispy, I'm gonna try out my quarter inch dagger striper that's also a Princeton Velvet Touch. Um, I may grab another brush in there, but I will let you know. And I am going to just start by drawing out that uh, kind of uh, raindrop shaped center. Um, I'm using a graphite aquarelle pencil and hardness HB, which is gonna give me the lightest line. And I'm gonna draw that center kind of uh, focal point of my peacock feather. So I'm gonna draw almost like an egg shape actually, not really a raindrop per se, kind of egg shaped. So that is gonna be the main copper area. Then that center is kind of flat on the top and rounded and then comes to a little bit of a point. And I know you can't see that well. Here is my original sketch. See, I have kind of this egg shape and then a flat topped circle that comes down at a point. And then this shape, kind of like a little Pac-Man guy. So I'm doing this super faintly so that my pencil lines don't show through. And that one comes almost at the top of where, and it doesn't, need to be even. In fact, my inspiration picture, one side is shorter than the other, so it's longer on this side and then swoops up. And the feathers kind of all overlap each other coming this way. I guess the, the little parts of the feather. So we're gonna start just doing that center. I'm gonna use that round side four. And like I said, I'm mixing together this gem red. Which these are not super, super bright, vibrant red. It's, it's like a metallic. I'm mixing with that yellow gold. I'm getting a coppery orange color is what it ends up looking like. So with this, um, you're not gonna get the same effect as watercolor per se. It's really uh, not as transparent. I think it's more in the line with a gouache, but it's kind of in between a watercolor and gouache. I think they were advertised as watercolors, but uh, they can be much more opaque depending on how much water you add. And you do have to put quite a bit of water in it to get them very transparent. 
So I'm just going to paint the inside. I have mine coming to a point. And then I will go back over that um, after that layer dries just to add in some of the feathering details because it does have in my photo, you can see little individual lines that are sweeping up. So we'll just color that in, get an orange color. It's kind of a coppery orange color, it looks like, in the... I do have some other metallic paints that I've, I've used in some of my other videos. I have those um, Art Philosophy Metallic Accents, and they have some colors in there as well, and I think I might have used those the last time I did that peacock feather many moons ago now. Okay, so then it has green going on this outside, and then there's like a little band of yellow gold. And I'll make sure I'm putting that inspiration photo up on the screen, kind of side by side, so you can see it. Okay. All right wait for that to dry just a tiny bit because I don't want that to bleed. So I think I might do the center before I do that next section. So I want, it's a deep blue, purpley blue. Okay, so as you might notice here, I do have to get this going quite a bit here. You don't get a whole lot. You have to really start working that. And that is not super dark. Okay, so I've got that purple and all my blue. I may end up grabbing just a little bit of other watercolor here. I might grab um, one of my art philosophy sets here to mix in. Yeah. That's just getting very pastel like. Okay, I'm gonna grab. Okay, I'm gonna use this currants set because this has got this really pretty deep sea blue that would be really good with that. And I can mix that into my metallics. So I'm gonna use that. And so deep sea is this one right here, the second to last one. I may mix jellyfish went in with that blue metallic for that other blue ring as well. Maybe I'll end up using some of that green in there too. We'll see what I end up doing. Okay. All right, so taking that deep sea, I'm going to mix that in with my little metallic I had just started to get together here. Adding that metallic in there really lightens it up. And I'm not sure how much of that shimmer is really coming through in that, but we'll see what it looks like in the end. green I want to do here. It's brighter green right around here and then more of a yellowy green this way. We could use this algae. Would be good. This algae. Algae and then I'll try the sea green. So it's these two right here. Sea green and algae. And then I'll mix in my green metallic with that. Okay. 
All right, and I am using my four for mixing, but I will switch over to my dagger once I get that mixed up. Instead of mixing green with this, because I think it's going to look a little weird, I'm going to try the yellow gold with that, because in the picture it is kind of like a yellow green gold. Oh, that's going to be pretty, yes. I don't know if you can see that very well, but um, this yellow gold with that algae color is really pretty. <laughs> and it looks spot on for what this picture is um, that I'm using for my inspiration photo. by itself probably kind of a pukey green color but <laughs> it looks really pretty actually okay I'm gonna start out with my brighter green get a little bit more of the green in there with that there we go okay so I mixed the sea green which is the 141 from the current set with the gem green and then I mixed the algae 142 with the yellow gold from the kiritaki set okay I'm gonna rinse out my four and now I'm gonna get that dagger and I'm gonna start kind of uh, I'm gonna give myself a line here to start off with I'm just gonna curve down and then this is going to start to go around that and I'm just going to follow the uh, shape of this and just go around and it's okay to be thicker because we'll go back over in layers and the tips kind of turn into that green gold that yellow gold one so we can switch
As you might notice, in the inspiration photo even, the little uh, feather segments are not that thin, so you can kind of put a little more pressure on the striper or your sword liner or whatever type of brush you decide to use. And some of them kind of overlap each other. You have, they're kind of going in different directions in some cases, but generally they are following the same line, but they can have some that kind of go back the other direction, but I'm starting off of that line in the center and then going out from there. And then I might have some that overlap, get thinner, thicker, really vary that. And just kind of make your way down. And then I, I did go over the top here. I might go back and add some more of those brighter green ones. I have to mix some more up. Even here, there's a kind of a gap on this lower part I could do. Leave a bigger space there. You may need to adjust the angle that you're holding your brush at just to get a better feel for it. So whatever feels comfortable. And I'm pretty much dipping my brush after every stroke. Uh, because it is quite small and doesn't hold a lot, but I'm also not completely loading my brush because I don't want it to drip or to get too much paint and leave puddling areas. So it's just uh, something to practice and learn the feel of that brush if you're not used to it. But I like it for lots of different uh, types of painting applications. So, All right, I am going to mix up a little bit more of my brighter green. Going back to that sea green color again. They're a little more thick and dense up here, and then they get sparse as you go down. I might add a little bit of this brighter green back into some of those as well. Fill that in a little bit more here. And then I, you notice I have some of this kind of feathering. It's when you get to a point where your brush is not having enough paint, you'll get, it'll pick on the texture of the, pa the paper. Um, since I'm using a cold pressed paper, it does have just a very faint texture. It will give you those little bump feathery areas if you don't have enough paint on your brush when you go over it. So that's why as you're getting out to the edge, don't want to have a too overloaded uh, brush, but then at the same time, you don't want to have um, not enough paint, which is why I said I'm dipping it after every single pass, just to try to avoid getting this feathery look where it's bumped. Um, I didn't want it to be completely like that all over. All right, I'm going to add just a little bit of green here, kind of coming at the base of these feather segments. Just to give it a little bit more. And then go into, I had just a little bit of the gold that I kind of mixed on the side there. I just want to accentuate the center of that feather. I'm just going down. I'm just going to have it fade off. Okay, now to do that brighter blue in the center. And I'm going to use think the jellyfish color which is the fifth one over number 137 there it is yeah that's the one I want and I'll mix in a little bit of that metallic blue with it just to give it a little shimmer okay and then I'm going back to my four this is all dry now I'm just going to very carefully go around. And then in my picture when I sketched, remember there's like a little point where it comes down. This is a nice moment to practice brush control, trying not to go over top of your copper or your metallic orange, whichever you want to call it. Right. 
And I want to add a little bit of color variation up here on the top. So I wanted to just take a little more of that red. And I'll just go back into the palette where I mixed up my copper. And just get that a little more red. And I want to add some of that in on the top. All right, I'm going to rinse my brush and to blend that down, clean water, kind of wipe it off on a towel a little bit. And then I'm just going to blend that in. Just to try to get that um, a fade of a gradient of the copper there. So there. Fill that in there. Okay, I like that. That looks pretty. Alright, also one of the things in the picture was they had a little bit of a gold line right there. So I could try to do that. Just very slightly taking my four and making some small strokes, kind of going in that semicircle and following the... I'm not sure how noticeable that's going to be, but I'll add it in there. Just kind of following the form of the top. Yeah, I had a little bit more gold in there. Okay. All right, I kind of want to add some splatters and fun little elements just to brighten that up a little because it's a lot of dark green and gold, but I really like this bright blue in there. So maybe I'll add a bunch of paint splatters of the blues just to kind of change it up a little bit. In fact, um, before I do that, there's a little bit of purple almost in there. Let's see if I can just take some of this metallic purple, or the gem violet, whatever it was called. Just want to go over that a little bit maybe to add. Okay, and then I'll do the same thing what I did with the red was I had a damp brush and I can blend that. Let's see what that ends up looking like. Hopefully I'm not lifting off my blue too much here. I'll go back, add a little bit in there. I'll just drop that in. There we go. That actually was better. Lift off some of that extra water that's puddling there so I don't end up with a feathery look in there. Move those out of the way. 